This video is going to cover changing the power steering pump on my Mondeo. It started to leak. Uh, this engine is a Duratec HE. Uh, I believe some other cars like the Focus Mark II have a similar, if not quite identical, setup. And the principle is very similar on all cars. Um, unless, of course, you have electric steering, in which case, not applicable. Now, on the Duratec, the pump is at the top of the engine, at the front of the engine bay here. Uh, on my pump, it's the pulley spindle seals that have uh, apparently gone as I'm getting a nice trickle of oil come out from in there and make a complete mess of everything below it. To get access on this car, you need to do a few further things, which I'll quickly overview. Uh, the right-hand headlight needs to come out first, uh, like some other operations on this engine, uh, like the thermostat. Uh, it's kind of a keyhole surgery job. Uh, you can see how I'm doing that here, but I won't cover the details because I have other videos on changing light bulbs that uh, do it in detail. And uh, if you're up for a power steering job, then you probably already know this basic stuff. Next uh, is the right wheel once off because we want access to the engine cover behind the wheel well. Uh, again, basic stuff and there shouldn't be any need to discuss removing a wheel. Uh, you do need to lift and support the front of the car, not only to take the right wheel off, um, but for other reasons, as you'll see soon. It doesn't need to be high, just enough for the wheels to clear the ground. In the wheel well, there's a uh, plastic lower cover, which is held in place with just four screws. Very easy to undo, although annoying, because three are 10 millimeters, while the other is an eight. Anyway, undo and remove said cover, like shown. Then you will have access to the cam pulley and a few other things we need. Firstly, this is the auxiliary belt tensioner and we need to loosen it. It's basically a powerful spring and the way to action it is to apply clockwise torque to the 15 millimeter hex head in its center. That will move the tensioner pulley against its spring and loosen the belt. Be careful doing this, uh, use a decent bar that you have good control over and don't damage the nearby brake lines. With the belt held loose, you can pull it off the uh, easiest pulley to access, which is the camshaft. Then let the tensioner relax and uh, you'll be able to get to the point of all this, which is to lift the belt off the pump pulley at the top. Next, we can start working on the pump. Uh, it's reservoir first, and yeah, you should try to get as much fluid out of it as possible. I'm using my trusty hand soak pump here. Use whatever you like and vacate the old oil into a container. You could just pull the hose and uh, drain it, but it's hard to get a container under that in the right location, so this is likely to avoid making a mess. Then you can take off the return hose. Uh, you will lose the remaining fluid out of the reservoir, so I suggest that you get a bunch of absorbent paper and uh, hold it under in one hand and then action a pair of vice grips with your other hand on the hose clip, like so. The reservoir is held with three bolts. The uh, one is here at the top under the main wiring loom here. Um, I believe that there is supposed to be a plastic clip here which you take off, uh, but in my case it's broken as you can see, so anyway off that comes and then the bolt below it is most easily undone with a uh, deep socket. Then there are a, a pair of bolts at the bottom on either side of its mating with the pump body, so get those out as well. Then the reservoir will be free and you can take it out. It'll be dripping oil, so get rid of it quickly, maybe dump it in a catch tray to drain. And incidentally, check these O-rings on the neck here. There are supposed to be two, the green one at the base and a second black one which sits about halfway along there. I didn't realize it at the time and I had to go find it when it was stuck inside the pump. And I'll show you more later. Okay, now the pump itself. This will be dripping fluid again, so just some paper towel below will help prevent mess. The next thing is to disconnect the high pressure line, uh, which is this union where the metal line from the steering rack joins the pump body. 
this is the most difficult part of this job, I would say, uh, mostly because it's very hard to access and it's very tight. And the workshop manual instructs the pulley be removed first, and that would definitely help, uh, because part of the difficulty comes from the fact that the line is placed very close to the pulley, uh, meaning a decent flare nut spanner head will have trouble clearing the pulley to the extent that the spanner head has bulk to it. Now, I was originally intending to use a bar or a ratchet handle uh, with a crow's foot attachment, but I just couldn't get it to physically fit and make it work. Uh, and then you have to get le leverage on the handle, of course. So taking the pulley off would help, but of course you need a, a pulley puller. So in the end, uh, I was able to make a conventional flare nut spanner do the job. This is an 18 millimeter hex, by the way. And don't skimp on this tool. Uh, don't even try with a regular open spanner. Uh, way too much risk of rounding off the nut. You do need a proper and good quality pipe tool. Anyway, with a lot of force and a bit of a skinned elbow in the end, I was able to crack it loose with this tool, as you can see. And then it's just a bit of a laborious process to um, get it undone, sort of one eighth of a turn at a time. Oh, and by the way, you really need to uh, do it on the car because if you're thinking of taking it off first, um, because one of the pulley to block bolts, sorry, one of the pump to block bolts is directly behind the line union. So I'm not sure if you could even undo it, um, or let alone take it out while the line's still in place. So uh, yeah, thanks to Ford or Mazda. Um, you also need to uh, take off this nut on the bracket so that the line can move while you undo it. Finally, it'll come loose and you'll have more draining fluid to enjoy. The rest is pretty easy. You just undo the four bolts holding the pump onto the head. They're small and uh, simple enough to access. Two at the top and two at the bottom. And then the pump will be free and you can take it out. All right, if you're replacing the pump, you should have it ready. Check it's the right one, obviously. Um, and as you can see, it uh, this one came with a new pulley already on it, um, which is probably in better condition than mine, uh, which is one reason that I didn't want to bother removing the old pulley. And also, I noticed that uh, in a parts list that there were two different sizes of bolt listed for the reservoir to pump joint, and the mine were the same. So no issues, but uh, maybe check that your bolts will go into the new pump uh, before reassembly, lest you need to replace the bolts too. Now before the new pump can go in, we need to clean up the line union fitting. Uh, so these use a Teflon O-ring seal, the remnants of which you can see on here. You need to pick the pieces of that off and uh, clean up the threads and the mating surfaces before you can put the uh, new one on. Now. I bought a new seal plus a spare from a Ford dealership. Uh, this is it here. I'll put the part number below. Possibly you can get the same thing from a you know plumbing or um, hardware place, but I didn't know the dimensions in advance and I, I couldn't find them out and it seemed specific enough that it was just easiest to order it from Ford. It says made in USA. Anyway, once you have the seal, you have to apply it, which means getting it down over the threads onto the um, mating surface where it sits captive. That's not so easy as it might seem because it's smaller than the thread diameter. The workshop manual requires a, a specific tool be used, um, the sort of cylinder which covers the threads and you slide the seal over it. Um, I tried to bodge that with electrical tape stretched over the threads like this, uh, but it didn't really work. I, I couldn't get the seal to get started on there. Um, there's a great YouTube channel from a Ford mechanic in the US called uh, Ford Tech uh, Marco Loco, uh, which I recommend. It's a great channel. And he has a video I'll link to here where he basically says you can do it directly if you warm and uh, sort of stretch the seal just a little bit beforehand and then carefully work it down one thread at a time um, with a bit of power steering fluid as lube. And then if you uh, leave it to sit for a while, once it's down there, uh, leave it to sit to relax back into its original shape. So uh, that's what I did and it seemed to work. All right, now the pump can go back in with its uh, four bolts to the engine head. 
Nothing complicated here. The torque is at 18 newton meters if you want to use a torque wrench. Snuggle them up. And then the line union. Um, you can get the fitting started by hand, making sure not to cross thread it. And uh, then get the flare nut spanner on it again. And of course, it's just a reversal of undoing it. Uh, to tighten it, the torque is 65 newton meters, which is quite a bit. Uh, but as before, it would be um, very difficult to get a torque wrench on it, and I certainly couldn't. So um, I basically used a torque of whatever my strength is multiplied by the lever length of the spanner. Um, what I should say is don't back the nut off at all in the process of tightening it, because that Teflon seal is being crushed and mangled as you do this. And once it's done, you need to leave it well alone. And uh, sorry about this camera angle, by the way, but you get the idea. Don't forget to put the nut back onto that bracket and tighten it up. Moving on, the reservoir is next. Now, two things to look at. Uh, first, you'll notice that I've taped up the return hose nipple. Uh, that's to contain the fluid that I'm going to put into it. It'll leak, uh, but it's good enough temporarily. Uh, this is because I'm going to do a fluid flush, as you'll see. Uh, second, this is the pump neck join uh, that I showed you before while it was still dirty. And as I mentioned then, uh, um, you can see that there are two O-rings. Now, ideally, you would replace these, and it's possible you may have to if they're obviously damaged. Mine seem fine, so I'm going to stick with them. And um, But yeah, as you can see, there are two, so check that you have them both in place. Right, so it gets joined back up um, and the screws put in place. Don't forget the one at the top. The torque on all three of these is 9 newton meters, so not very much. Just snug them with a ratchet, that should be fine. Now, mechanically speaking, this is all progress. The belt can go back on now, put it in place with the uh, pump pulley first, and then get down in the wheel well and work the belt tensioner again so that you can get it back on the camshaft pulley. Make sure that the belt's correctly rooted, as it is prone to uh, having fallen off other pulleys since you took it off. And uh, while we're down here, I'm disconnecting the cam position sensor here. Now this is to help me do the oil flush. Uh, you can skip this if you're just going to bleed and top up. Now the reason I want to flush my system is I'm changing the fluid type to Mercon 5, Mercon V. Uh, which, to cut a long story short, is the updated Ford specified fluid to replace the old Mercon, uh, including usage in power steering systems. Now, there's an American TSB from Ford on this, which I found, which doesn't mention Mondeo's because it's American, uh, but it does mention other cars with Duratex, like the Focus. So, originally I was using this specialist fluid that explicitly mentioned the old M2C195 spec, which is what my car demands in its um, user manual. Uh, but that was a very expensive product. And when I looked into it this time more closely, I found that its viscosity figures were a bit lower than some alternatives, meaning that it might be more prone to leaking, especially in older systems like mine. Uh, I also noticed that the local Ford dealerships specify uh, Castrol Dextron 3 to use which is a pretty basic product. They don't even use a Ford branded or Motocraft product. So that was an option too, but in the end I decided to go with the TSB advice and get a Mercon V product, uh, which happily is also the same as what's in my gearbox. Now, not to d dwell on this for too long, but I was confused for a while by some product listings online which are selling Mercon LV and are explicitly complaining that, uh, sorry, claiming that it's the replacement for the M2C195. Uh, but these two specs here are not compatible, so this makes no sense. I'm fairly sure that this is an error, so uh, be careful. So since I'm doing a flush, I need that return hose to be stuck in a container. And remember, I stopped up the reservoir side of that joint. So what I'm going to do is fill up the reservoir with new fluid and then crank the engine to run the pump slowly. Now, because I disconnected the camshaft sensor, the engine won't fire, so I'm basically using the starter motor to run the pump. Now, the first time I did this, it didn't do much. Uh, either I didn't do it long enough, or there was an air block. So what you also need to do is uh, turn the wheels lock to lock. 
This will flush out and bleed the steering rack. And this is the other reason that you need both front wheels off the ground, by the way. Okay, so do this a few times and you'll start getting fluid out the return hose. In my case, the old fluid was green, which made it easy to see the new. Uh, the new Mercon V is uh, cherry red. So it's pretty obvious when the old stuff is gone. And the system doesn't hold very much fluid. You've done a full flush by the time you've filled up a soft drink bottle like this. Okay, once done flushing, you can reconnect the hose to the reservoir. Uh, simple enough, unless you're clumsy like me. Uh, and then top the reservoir up. Uh, but bear in mind, there will probably still be air in the system, so it will need further bleeding. Uh, regardless of whether you've done a flush or not, you'll need to do this. So, by the way, the uh, level on these reservoirs is really hard to read. I find that the plastic is too opaque. The way to see clearly is to uh, backlight the min-max marks with a uh, powerful flashlight. Here you can see it's at min level. So uh, top it up and then do more bleeding by turning the wheel lock to lock. And as you get air out, the level will just keep dropping, um, as you can see. So you just repeat that process until it remains stable at the max mark. Right, if you took off the camshaft sensor, uh, don't forget to put it back on. And while down here, the plastic cover can go back on. The screws are easy enough, uh, don't over tighten them or you'll strip the crappy little things that they go into. And the wheel can go back on, ready for lowering the car. Then I suggest that you run the engine properly and uh, leave it idle for a few minutes. Now this will be the first time that the pump is being run in earnest. So now is the time that you should check for leaks. This all looks good, so it looks like I got that union correct. So put the rest of the car back together and lower it. And you could go for a test drive. Uh, turn the wheel, lock to lock, of course, uh, in use. And after you've driven it for, you know, a day or so, come back and check that the fluid level, check the fluid level once again. Um, and also for any leaks, of course. If it's staying at the max mark and it's not dropping at all, then you're good. Okay, that's it. I hope that was helpful. Have fun.